Hello friends, my name is James. And this is my 1965 Alberg 30 Sloop SV Tritea. I have been slowly sailing solo around the world since leaving Los Angeles in 2021. This is Rhonda, a Kiwi sailor who moved aboard full time once I reached Sydney. Join us as we explore the east coast of Australia and see as many wild places and wild animals as possible. Just down in here. as we make our way up to Southeast Asia. So we've only been back a few hours and um, I have itchy feet. <laughs> we laid down for a bit, had a rest. Now we're making some tea and we're gonna haul up the anchor yeah. and head on to a new spot. It's a place called, I think it's called Cobbler's Beach, mm. which yeah. is a, a nude beach. I don't know how many nude people are gonna be out today because it's very <laughs> chilly out. Um, chilly by my standards. It's really not that cold. Um, it's really not that cold, but <clears throat> it is not uh, naked on the beach weather, that's for sure. So, we're going to start the engine, haul up, and check out a new spot. What's our depth? See those waves crashing on the rocks over there? We're doing almost five knots with the dinghy into fantastic sailing wind. We're sailing like 1.2 miles or something. <laughs> but it's fun just to like sail across the bay in decent wind. Without all of those other boats I know, out here. They were without the regatta happening. Whoa, yeah. imagine that. Our crazy long, like, hour-long sail. <laughs> I don't even know if we took an hour. We are approaching the anchorage now. We've shortened head sole. We're just gonna kind of creep in under sail. We might anchor under sail if the conditions are right, but we'll see. But Rhonda pointed out there's one boat tucked way up in. 
we're not going to get that ambitious with this anchorage but here in sydney harbor they tend it seems like they have like yellow mooring boys which they call buoys which they call boys here that no, kind of note where the anchorages are where you can and can't anchor so we're gonna head in get behind these three yellow boys yeah boy and uh drop the hook Okay, so we got anchored here at Cobbler's Beach. And there was a naked man running on the beach. Nudist beach. For any nudists get offended, I have no problem with nudity. I don't want to run with, run with my <laughs> out, but <clears throat> that's just me. Um, but I think nudity's perfectly fine, and I think it's absurd that people have issues with nudity. Um, <clears throat> we had a fun sail over. Perfect little wind. Not crazy about this this anchorage as far as the setting goes. The first time we tried to set the anchor, it felt it was dragging for sure. So then we hauled up, set it again. The only benefit is it's like really shallow. It's like I think we we end up dropping the hook in like 14 feet, which is what like you know four meters or something. Um, so it's really shallow. If we need to pick up and move, even if it was in the night, it'd be no problem. But we'll only spend one day here for sure. But, new spot, Cobbler's Beach. Mm -hmm. Rhonda just made from scratch risotto, which is much better than the instant risotto that I always make. Very delicious. So, what do you think so far of oh, Sydney Harbor? Now that mm -hmm. you've been at three spots, this is our third spot. Oh yeah, we're kind of the marina. It's yeah. a spot. <laughs> better than the marina. That's yes, for sure. for sure. Really pretty. Kind of spooky how close the boats get to you. Yeah. A little bit, but... Mm. Anchoring, people anchor a lot closer here. Yeah, it seems that way. Um, what else? I don't know. You've noticed a lot of differences between here and New Zealand. Mm. Like landscape wise and trees. And oh that. yeah, for sure. The trees and stuff. The landscape looking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> spiders. Oh yeah, that's nuts too. <laughs> yeah, the spiders yesterday were crazy. Just lurking around. <laughs> they're pretty big. Oh my gosh. They're, just, they're just chilling. It's crazy. It's, it's actually really a bit, a bit frightening. <laughs> it's actually like a concern of mine because Rhonda's only ever lived in New Zealand where there's no poisonous anything. Mm. There's like the brown back or something like that, or the red back, but they're mm -hmm. very rare. White tails. White tails, mm. okay. But they're not they're not gonna kill you. No, but they're the only venomous thing in New Zealand. Mm. Right? Pretty much. Yep. Um, so nothing nothing wants to kill you in New Zealand. She's used to being able to just like tromp through high grass in the with no shoes on mm. in the wild, you know. I grew up in New Mexico where we had rattlesnakes. We had to take like anti venom kits with us when we would go play in the pasture as a kid. We had black widows, we had brown recluses, we had uh, uh, Gia, Gia monsters, uh, okay. there are these lizards that are poisonous. Mm. We had all kinds of stuff. Mm. So for me, it was like the opposite. When I was in Fiji, I was like walking through high grass <laughs> and I was super stressed, even though I knew there was nothing poisonous in Fiji, besides the sea snakes, which I actually saw one of those. But for you... It's a little riskier. You have to really keep your mind about you. Well, and I think I already have. Like, I am cautious about it. Like, last night, mm -hmm. you know, going up on those rocks and stuff. And then, if it was New Zealand, I would have just had, I would have just gone into the bush. Like, no questions, you know. But I was barefoot. I have no idea what's up there. So, you know, I don't really want to get hurt by yeah. this, this early on, you know. <laughs> like, just straight off the bat. Yeah. You know, it, you know, and it was dusk, so the, yeah. the diet was kind of a bit dim, and I don't know. I think it's just best to 
be cautious if you have no idea. <laughs> yeah, and neither one of us are really that knowledgeable of all no, the things. Not We've at looked all. at some websites and stuff, but we don't know all the things that can kill us here. We know there's a lot. Mm. <laughs> so yeah for sure we just need to be pretty i mean and the people warn you as well but then looking around at other people you know like there's if everyone's going on about the sharks and what is it the box jellies, box jellies. or something uh -huh. like people are harping on about that but like when we were anchored up there were people just jumping off their boats and like, oh yeah you know yeah. what i mean like well and we looked up the shark data and there's been like 36 attacks since like the 1700s or something, something crazy ridiculous. or some yeah. 36 deaths not attacks there's yeah. there are shark nets on beaches everywhere their sharks are definitely mm. you know problem but mm. not necessarily fatality but even bull sharks just biting you yeah, yeah we don't so there are there are like there shark are nets for a reason mm. and the box jellies but like you said people are swimming everywhere mm. yeah mm. so yeah but the bush thing long grass especially considering that there's spider webs mm -hmm. are just there they're right there you just walk straight into it mm -hmm. like and they're pretty decent sized yeah. spiders <laughs> they look freaking weird they're like what are, we don't know what they're called i have no idea they look like they've got like this kind of yeah you know, they're strange yeah that's strange looking <clears throat> yeah it's actually gonna be a fun thing is watching her see all this wild stuff Ma see? i mean i grew up with a lot of snakes growing up so freak out yeah it's gonna be fun mm. okay we're mm. gonna finish our delicious risotto and uh have more tea mm. sounds good and then call it a night we had a very rolly night last night on the hook very little sleep took place on tritea um so yeah it's first light and uh we're gonna haul up and head on to black wattle which i stayed at before rhonda got here for a few days and it's really nice well protected from the fairy wake and the swell and everything so we are gonna move on to that spot and make more coffee before we do We're approaching Black Wattle Bay. I spent a couple nights here waiting for Rhonda to get here from New Zealand. It's a cool spot. 
Um, we're gonna go through this really cool decommissioned swing bridge. You like sail right, right through the little cut into this protected bay. I really like this anchorage. It was a nice place to rest up after the Tasman crossing. And um, we're gonna spend a night or so here. Um, but we're approaching the swing bridge now, which is cool. This is rad. And we are anchored at Black Waddle Bay. I really like this spot. Um, this is my buddy Mert's boat right here. It's a 1984, I believe, Alberg 34. There were only four made. And from what people tell me on the internet, this is the only one that ever left Canada. So pretty exciting. It ended up here in Sydney and um, Mert bought it and is going to be refitting it and sailing it to the Caribbean and I mean to the Mediterranean in a few years. Uh, I visited with them last time I was here and uh, we're going to be going over and checking out the Sydney fish market which is over there and the town of Glebe probably will walk around. This is a really good spot well protected easy access there's two different dinghy docks you can walk to a bunch of shops and restaurants and cafes and it's just a really nice little anchorage and a beautiful city view at night so stoked to be in a more secure spot than we were last night um, and ready for breakfast <laughs> well, we just dingied over to the fish market dock and we're going to go check out the legendary Sydney fish market and uh, see what the haps is. Uh, easy little drive in the dinghy over. Um, let's check it out.
see the gymnastic team. Wow. <laughs> Did it move in your yeah. hand? <laughs> they are live. Ooh, nice. They are so nice. Look at blue ones. Blue swimming crabs. Wow. I wonder if they lose their color when they heat it up. Wow. <laughs> New Zealand snapper. He almost looks like it looks like a snapper too. It's like it looks like a you know that kind of great emperor. So this part of the family. Barramundi. That was that fish. The barramundi. Where? Uh, it's on the menu somewhere. We were a couple of days ago. The Sydney fish market was like over the top. Mm, it was hectic. <laughs> like so many fishes. I've never seen so many sea creatures in one zone. Mm. Um, and uh, yeah, everything you could want if you're shopping for seafood. Amazing. But it was overstimulating beyond belief. Well, you said you'd never been anywhere that crazy either, right? No, it was a lot. Uh, well, a lot of people and a lot of fish. Yeah, it was crazy. Fish things. But if you're ever in Sydney, definitely check it out. It's an experience for sure. It's pretty cool. Now we're off to Mac Pack. Uh, Rhonda's on a desperate search for a good hat. Mm, something lightweight. I need to. I need. I should be sewing one. This is kind of my plan. I was just sewing my bucket hat, but that that'll come. Yeah. But now I just need to find something that's suitable for this heat. Yeah, lightweight. And um, yeah, something rad. So we're gonna walk into downtown and find some of their camping shops. I think Mac Pack is our first stop. If you enjoy the content on this channel and would like to contribute, you can consider joining the Patreon crew. Thanks for watching. Fair winds until next time.